wanted to ask Sass Legman, you we're talking about representing you and your you said earlier that you didn't start rapping to become a rapper and in terms of sort of depicting like, like, you, I find that interesting. Uh, like, well, it's, it's that seems like, like the wrong way to not become I've, a rapper. I've always been um <laughs> I've always been uh I've always been a like it's always been the biggest part of my life since I've ever heard rap, you know what I mean? But it was always something where I listened to it while I was going through what I was going. When I would sit and put the Batman comics on and try not to think about death and taxes and everything in between at the young age I was at, yeah. there was rap music on in the background. But because I became so introverted, a lot of stuff got bottled up. And then when I turned uh, like 13 or 14, things started getting real bad. And I started uh, getting in some trouble and, and showing signs of potential trouble in the future. And, sure. Uh, I ended up in anger management. Well, that was the beginning of it. Anger management was step one. But um, <clears throat> one of the one of the exercises was instead of acting out on the impulse that I feel when I feel these certain rage issues, separate myself from the situation and write down exactly how it is, right. like what it is that I feel. So, sort of naturally over time, you know, the, my routine would be I get pissed off about something, go up to my room, blast whatever song feels like what I feel right now, and then sit down and feel and write down right, what right. I felt and just gradually over time it became I feel this way and it feels like yeah. that and then I want to do this because when I, I feel find like that and it started man. rhyming and then I just like but I, I would write it and then I wouldn't show anyone and then uh, I have to give credit to KL and White Mike from the Ground Squad and anybody who knows Halifax Hip Hop History knows who Ground Squad were yeah. but um, they have found my notebook and they knew I could rap from rapping along the songs in the car and they would read my shit and they were like hey you should, you should maybe put this down and that's sort of how it started but I never intended on that whereas i had been messing with beat gear since i was 10. my dad had a drum machine right i was 10 it had a couple synths and i was learning how to run midi when i was a little kid so more beats on production and that kind of end of things were where you sort of came into it in a way it, it was uh, like, uh, conceptualizing actually doing yeah like making it, something yeah that's what it was and 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 uh, when i started going to the studio with kl and white mike and then shortly after that i moved to st john new brunswick and it, i thought it was the worst thing in the world yeah. man and uh but what happened was i ended up meeting who turned out to be my best friend, Microphone Jones, and some guys there, the vet crew, Sean Wan and above from First Words. I don't know if you're right. familiar with them from Fredericton. And we, they, when I met them in St. John, they were like, hey, we record in Halifax with Classified and Joe Run. And right there, I was like, well, shit, that's where KL and White Mike record. I already felt a little more at home with these dudes because right. there was a connection, and then that's really how I started recording. So wow. awesome. I was going to say what's really interesting about Sess and how he approaches music. Is, and I told him one day, I said, you know, I'm going to make the saddest album ever one day. And he was like, why would you do that? And I think that Sess, when he listens to music, he, it, it actually changes his mood in terms of like he gets Im immersed in it in a way that I don't think a lot of other people do. Oh, yeah, like because of, I always laugh at this, like this is going to sound real messed up unless you know me, but because of certain issues I have, I can't listen to someone like Joe Budden unless... I am feeling real well in my life because I can relate to so much of what he talks about that it can pull me into how he feels on those records. And because of that, I, I have really? like, yeah, and I know that sounds messed up, but not that's really. how no, connected not... I feel to music that if I listen to the wrong song at the wrong time, it can pull yeah, me I under. Think it, so you can be suggested like... Hey, but not, but not, not, not suggested even like... Um, to go out and do something, yeah. but the moods or the like attitude. Yeah. You know, he's bipolar. I'm bipolar. He's OCD. I'm OCD. I don't know if he's ADHD, but you throw that in the mix, and it's not a fun time. Yeah. So when I got someone putting out an immaculately good album, that is to anybody who doesn't feel those ways, he's able to paint those pictures. But if you do feel those ways, he's handing you a ticket, at least yeah. to me. So I got to be careful. And it's it's funny uh, that you have the common sense. He has the Sess has the common sense to not listen to a song that's going to put him into a negative headspace. I'll listen to a song that's like, I need to get sad. Yeah, like the, <laughs> not even because I need to get sad. It's just like, what is this emotion? This is interesting from like a learning about myself from a psychological perspective. And I'll just like listen to the saddest song ever over and over again until I get into this really bad <laughs> headspace. Yeah, but that's, that's exactly that's, but that's how I learned it. That's how I learned that about myself was that after exploring it so deep, I, I started realizing like shit this is what's putting me deeper into this yeah headspace. I used to find that when I would be getting down and down and down I would start listening to something or doing something usually listening to something that was maybe